As we film this, U.S. stocks are back near their highs and global stocks aren't far behind. Do we still be believe that this is a correction? And what are some indicators that we might be looking for for a bear market? Yes, we believe what we just went through was a correction and we remain bullish on the global stock market. With that being said, if you think about the major things that cause a bear market, would be a recession, don't say a recession in front of us, would be things like excessive sentiments. We mentioned that there's definitely not excessive sentiments, uh, massive expansion in supply of securities, that's not happening right now. Big changes in regulation or accounting rules, don't see that on the horizon. Uh, big liquidity drains in the system, don't see that happening. Major world wars, don't see that on the horizon. So we have the saying that if you're not bearish, you're bullish. And we can go through all the major things that would cause a bear market and pretty much check them off the box and say, we don't see those happening right now. But, you know, one of the parts going back to what I said earlier that I like a lot about where we are right now is a degree to which in terms of things that cause bear markets and recessions, there's kind of been a lot of presumption that those things are here. So for example, uh, throughout the spring and into the summer, there's quite a lot of endless stories about how it hasn't quite happened yet, but the yield curve's inverting, and that's gonna cause trouble because when the yield curve inverts, oh my gosh. Now the fact of the matter is, you can measure this stuff and you can measure it compared to history, and I'm just gonna tell you that the yield curve was this flat or flatter, correctly measured, uh, to almost all of the last half of the 1990s while the bull market just went on and on and on and on and on. And this level of slope in the yield curve, yield curve being long-term rates minus short-term rates, how steep is that, how big is the spread? Um, there's nothing that's predictive about this, but the degree to which the media would say over and over and over again, and clients would ask at client seminars and people would be freaked out about the inverting yield curve, that's a bullish statement. Fear of a false factor is always bullish. And when you get a period like we've had, where you get so much fear of these false factors, uh, and Aaron rattled off some, but the inverted yield curve, if you really get a real global inverted yield curve, it's bearish. I mean, that's a big negative because banks stop lending then. And when banks stop lending, you get problems. But fundamentally, that people have fear of something that isn't, that fear's in the marketplace now. And as it unwinds, you get that optimism on the other side when they're not quite so fearful. And can this you? Is, this is this is this is an ongoing bull market. You had mentioned in terms of the yield curve being, when correctly measured. Oh yeah. One of the things we're hearing in the media today constantly Endlessly. is how the how the yield curve is measured, and they're using the two-year versus the ten-year. But how many banks take in two-year deposits? Virtually zero. The way we measure it, the way we look at it, is looking at the ninety-day T-bill rate relative to the ten-year. And to Ken's point. You go back in time, I mean, what we're seeing today with the yield curve and the yield curve progression is very similar to what we saw in the late 90s. What's more, the U.S. yield curve is just one component to it, right? We need to look globally and consider all global yield curves. And there you'll see they're still nicely, positively sloped. I think it's worth also saying a few words about what correction stories really look like. And I think one of the real telltale signs of that is things seem very scary in the beginning and then as they grind along, you'll notice that the market just starts to move past these things. And I think that the trade wars is just such a great example of that, that, you know, if you go back five, four, six months ago, those kinds of headlines would really, the market would be very sensitive to them. And now here we are in the middle of summer and that there are new headlines about that every day. Someone from the Trump administration saying such and such or someone from the China's administration saying such and such, and yet they have a lot less impact. What I believe that often indicates is that the market is starting to recognize what a false fear really looks like and starting to move forward from it. And you know, in the last several corrections we've had, because we've had several during this bull market, uh, stories have had a tendency to grind on a little bit, grind on longer than even sometimes we'd normally expect. And I think that the China trade tariff narrative is just such a great one for the media on all sides. I mean, what do you have here? You have the two titans of the world going toe to toe, and it even has the word war in it. 
and what's going to happen tomorrow and how are they going to duke it out and who's going to be ascendant and so forth. Well, those are great things for the media. That's a great political fodder. But when we think about what's going to happen with the markets and the capital markets for our clients, those things have far less impact. You know, tied to that as well, what I hear all the time is the question of what's going to happen that allows people to get over these fears? What's the catalyst? When are we going to get some resolution here that allows investors to move away from things like trade concerns and maybe focus in on some of the more positive things happening in the world? And there are many of those positive things. But I think that point is a very good one, that you don't need a specific event. We don't need to all of a sudden come in one day and say, oh, all these trade issues, they've been thrown out the window, it's all resolved. Just the passage of time as people come to realize that it's probably a lot less big a deal than they initially worried. That grinding feature, just allowing the market to finally come to the realization, even without a big catalyst, that probably it was an overreaction to those initial concerns. And as people gradually focus a bit less on that, more on what else is going on in the world, like decent economic growth with low inflation and just spectacular corporate earnings. All of that's been happening in the background throughout. So as intention shifts from some of those overblown fears onto some of the more positive factors, that's what allows the bull market to continue. We don't need some specific event that suddenly puts all of this in the rearview mirror. If we get that, great, and there's some maybe potential there, but you don't need that in order for the bull market to progress. Said, said differently, everybody knows the story of the boy that cried wolf. And the longer that goes on, the less pe people pay attention to it, the more they just naturally tire of it and life goes on. For views on current events in the world of investing, visit marketminder.com. Updated daily, it offers on-demand access to Fisher Investments' most current thoughts on capital markets and the global economy as well as our sometimes irreverent commentary. We hope you will enjoy it. <laughs>